Thanks, Mark. Uh, as Mark mentioned, this is qualitative research, not quantitative, a bit of a departure for me, but it's about an important issue. It's about Equal Employment Opportunity Commission lawsuits in which employers are accused of favoring foreign-born workers over native-born workers. But before I get into the specifics of that, I want to just sort of motivate the discussion by talking about where this fits into the broader economics literature. So economic theory would generally state that there are mixed effects from immigration on the labor market. There are some positives and there are also some negatives. Uh, the positive, from the native's perspective. Uh, the positives, of course, would be that if you're able to lower the wage, then you can reduce the cost of production and therefore reduce the cost of goods and services. Another potential positive is that it could free up natives to work in higher skilled jobs. But of course, the negative is that among those native workers who remain in the industry, they now face greater competition from foreign labor and they're going to have downward pressure on their wages and their working conditions and potentially their job security. So empirically, economists have generally confirmed the theory. Most of the papers you read that do empirical analysis will find that those sorts of mixed effects. And in terms of uh, identifying the negatives, probably the best source is still the National Academies of Sciences. They're, they have a whole book on the topic of the economics of immigration. In, in, in one of those chapters, they have a table, it's a really big table, where each row is an empirical analysis. There's a column with the wage effects. And if you look down that column, you see minus, 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 minus. And of course, the minus means the wage is going down. But the problem with the empirical studies is that there are probably 100 or more different factors that could potentially influence how um, someone's paid or what their working conditions are like. How do you isolate the impact of immigration from all of those other factors? And these studies do that to varying degrees of success. Part of the problem, though, is that there's a wide range, therefore, of, of defensible methods and therefore also a wide range of results. So although we, um, the general feeling is that you get these mixed effects, once in a while you will encounter an empirical paper that claims that, in fact, the, uh, the theory is somehow wrong that in fact there are zero negative effects of, of immigration on native workers. Well, how plausible is that? That's really the purpose of this report today. I think that when you bring in the sort of on the ground research, sort of uh, reality based research, it serves as a sanity check, so to speak, on some of the outlying results that some people cite as evidence that there are no negative impacts of immigration. So uh, you be the judge of the plausibility of that. I'm going to read you a few uh, example cases from the paper. Uh, I, I do want to mention before I start that, that um, one thing I, I strive to do in the report, in my summaries of these cases, is to not go beyond the facts as alleged in the lawsuit. I did not add any embellishments, no commentary, and the like. So in order to maintain that standard, I am going to read directly, if you don't mind. If I try to do it from memory, I probably would screw it up. So here's your first example. According to a 2011 EEOC lawsuit, Southern Valley Fruit and Vegetable primarily employs Mexicans for the harvest season, but would initially hire Americans as well. Shortly after each harvest began, most of the Americans would be summarily discharged. Quote, all you Americans are fired, end quote, one manager told a group of 80 Americans who were let go at the same time. On another day that at least 16 Americans were fired, a manager stated, quote, all you black American people, F you all, just go to the office and pick up your check, end quote. Now, the, it's the uh, Atlanta office from the EEOC that was in charge of this particular lawsuit, and it added the comment that, quote, the practices alleged in the lawsuit are relatively common in the industry, end quote. And Georgia Legal Services was also involved here, and they added, Quote, discrimination against American workers in the H-2A guest worker program is endemic. We hope this case will bring attention to that problem, end quote. Now, lest you not believe that it really is endemic, I'll give you another example from ag the agricultural sector. A 2014 EEOC lawsuit. J&R Baker Farms segregated work crews by national origin, did not allow the American workers to start on time, sent Americans home or told them not to report for work on days when foreign-born employees worked as normal. 
and terminated Americans based on production standards that were not disclosed and not enforced against foreign workers. When the agricultural season began in the fall, nearly all American workers were fired within a few days. Now, these cases are explicit about the fact that foreign-born workers are being favored over native-born workers, but oftentimes it's more implicit. Oftentimes the cases are about how Hispanics are favored over blacks, and you have to kind of read between the lines to realize that given the industry we're in, given the region that we're in, the Hispanic workers are highly likely to be foreign-born, and of course the black workers are highly likely to be native-born. Let me give you an, like an example. When a Best Western hotel in Virginia came under new management, the managers began systematically replacing the hotel's black housekeepers with Hispanics. The replacement began when existing employees were told they would need to reapply for their positions after the management change. Subsequently, blacks with years of experience were denied reemployment. Hispanic workers were hired in their place. One manager expressed her preference for hiring Hispanics as housekeepers. You'll notice I used the word systematic in, this, in that last case because that's a very key word. This is not an accidental bias. Another example of something very systematic. When a warehouse in Memphis began using a new employment agency to fill its daily work crew, the agency, quote, from the EEOC, essentially replaced the African Americans with Hispanics, end quote. Potential workers would line up outside the warehouse each day, but the agency would select Hispanics over blacks, even when black workers were farther ahead in line. Sometimes managers would send potential black workers home by announcing in English that there were no more positions. After the African Americans left, the Hispanics were allowed to come into the warehouse and work. Again, systematic, neither subconscious nor subtle. Perhaps the most egregious example of this comes from Prestige Transportation Services. It would discard or refuse to accept employment applications from non-Hispanic blacks. Quote from the EEOC. On multiple occasions, when a black person applied for employment, prestige managers Ms. Ramirez and Ms. Rodriguez would stand behind the applicant and rub their hands on their skin to display their disdain for black people, end quote. Staff meetings were conducted in Spanish only, and one black driver who did manage to get hired would be sent home early while Hispanics continued to work. Now, I'm not gonna read every case to you. There are 21 cases in the report. It would get a little boring, although I do recommend reading it because I think the, the repetition actually is instructive. You see the same things happening over and over again, which is telling. I do wanna give you one more example. Uh, most of the time, the low-skill American workers who are discriminated against are black workers, but sometimes they're white as well. I wanna give you an example of that. At a Hampton Inn in Colorado, three non-Hispanic white housekeepers were fired by the new general manager and replaced by Hispanics. The owners, Falgon Patel and Mukun Patel, told the general manager that they preferred that maids be Hispanic because in their opinion, Hispanics worked harder, while American employees are lazy. The general manager allegedly told a Hispanic employee to recruit friends for the incoming vacancies because the owners preferred a Hispanic workforce. After three months, all of the Hampton Inn's non-Hispanic housekeepers were gone. Now, there are probably some of you sitting there saying, Okay, Jason, you call this qualitative research, but isn't that just a fancy name for a bunch of anecdotes? Well, I mean, in some, I, mean I agree, they are, there are a lot of anecdotes here, but I would say that the frequency and the consistency of these anecdotes is rather telling. I mean, to the point where you really have to be out of touch with reality to argue that there are no negative effects of immigration on native workers. In fact, let me just repeat that because I think it's a pretty important point. If you argue there are zero negative effects on native workers from immigration, then you are out of touch with reality. Furthermore, the types of anecdotes that we do not find are just as important as the type that we do find. I mentioned that there are many cases of Hispanics being preferred to black workers, but it was very, very difficult to find the reverse, very difficult to find cases of blacks being preferred to Hispanics, which is not to say Hispanics don't file EEOC lawsuits. They do, but their types of complaints they have are, again, very telling. When Hispanics file suits, they are not complaining that they are being replaced by some other group in the workforce. Instead, they're complaining about working conditions. They complain about low pay. They complain about dangerous situations on the job site. And they complain about harassment. Harassment oftentimes is ethnically based, ethnic slurs and so on directed at them. 
The saddest part is that when we're talking about Hispanic women, sexual harassment is a very pervasive problem if you believe these EEOC lawsuits, particularly out in the farm fields where there's very little to protect them. Uh, and we're not talking about just some stray comment. We're talking about some really objectionable stuff, unwanted touching, and worse that's going on uh, out in the fields. I could do a whole additional report on that based on all the material the EEOC provides on that specific topic. The point is here, though, that the anecdotes conform to, the, to economic theory. This is exactly what we would expect to happen if we believe that employers are using immigration to depress wages and working conditions. Again, this severely calls into question anyone claiming that there are zero negative effects from immigration. So uh, I'll leave it there, but I'm happy to continue the conversation in the Q&A later.